Okay, for your hands exercise, we have a bunch of different tasks laid out for you here so you can try out some of the techniques we learned. And we've mixed things up with the artwork a little bit so you'll be trying some different techniques on some different artwork. And in every case, we've provided you with one hand as an example and then one hand to copy essentially. So in this case here, our right hand, this outlined jointed hand, uh, the right hand is completed as you'll want to complete your exercise. So in this case, it's simple two-layer IK with no goal and simple little click and drag controllers for each finger and then a large overall controller to move and rotate the hand. So you'll want to recreate this exact rig here in the left-hand comp, and we've got that all waiting for you to rig up. So you're just going to copy the exact rigging on the left-hand side. Make sure you include all of your cleanup steps so you end up with a clean interface, everything locked, shied as appropriate, visibility as appropriate. Also, make sure that you lock all of the properties that you will not be needing for that particular controller, and be careful of naming and so forth. So your first task will be this simple click and drag rig. Your next task is going to be to create a rig where the fingers are puppet tooled. But rather than a click and drag null interface, instead, you're going to create a slider that closes and opens the hand. Now here you have one option, which is that you can either do what I did, which is actually rig up two-layer IK on all of the fingers and then animate those. And you can see how I put a curve on that motion path for that controller in order to get the nice arcing movement of that finger as it flexes. But you can, of course, also achieve this without IK if you want to work with FK and simply work with the rotation values on the finger nulls. You can do that as well. But either way, you're going to follow the same procedure of creating your animation with keyframes at 0, 10, and 20 frames with the neutral position at frame 10, then adding that morpher, adding the slider control, and then using our little magic code here in order to connect and translate the 0 to 20 morpher slider with the minus 100 to 100 control slider. So whether you use the just FK technique or whether you rig this up with IK and animate it, either way, the overall procedure will be the same. So here we have the left hand. Oops, we left that null on there. Let's get that turned off. So the left hand in this case is already rigged, and your job is to rig the right hand here in exactly the same way. Let's uncheck that there. And so this is all set up for you to rig here. Don't forget to add starch to the fingers. And don't forget little details like parenting the artwork for each layer into your IK chain. Notice the finger one is parented into that base finger null and so on. So you always make sure you keep that artwork connected to your rigging. Also make sure that when you're naming your sliders and other controls that you always indicate whether it's right or left. That's a really good practice to get into. It's helpful both for coding, but also makes the animator's life easier to be able to quickly identify what they're looking at. So that's two close-up hands. And then we're going to have you put together some hands on some full-body rigs. So first we have our hipster woman here. And again, we have one arm rigged for you and one for you to duplicate. The one that is completed is a jointed arm with a simple IK system, but then has puppet tooled fingers that are controlled with this little click and drag 
controller here and include an IK orientation checkbox to allow the hands to be switched, essentially turning the hand from right side up to upside down actually, which is very handy and gives you a lot of other posing options. Don't forget that as part of your cleanup, you always want to be able to zero out all your position values and your slider values. So in this case, you're going to start by unshying all of the layers and then we have everything here for you to rig up this arm exactly the same way that I rigged up this arm here. A couple little things to remember. Our little mini controller for the fingers here has its anchor point at the top here to kind of relate it as closely to those fingers as possible and keep this clean without having the anchor point right in the middle. And the bottom edge here is 20 pixels off the bottom edge of the large controller. And you can get the dimensions and so forth of these controllers by looking at the ones that are already in place here. Also don't forget the general rule we want the right hand controllers to be red and we want the left hand controllers to be purple. Now you of course can color your controllers really any color you want but that's the way I'm going to be doing it throughout this course and if you want to be sort of following along exactly that's the pattern I'm going to use. Right will be red, left will be purple, and center will always be green. Once again remember to identify right or left in all of your controllers including your IK orientation checkbox and clean up and lock your values when you're done. And just a note you will be rigging up the entire arm including the hand and fingers. It'll be good practice and it'll be good to kind of get acquainted with how these all go together since you're usually going to be rigging the hand with the arm at the same time anyway. Your next task will be to duplicate this hand rig on the orange woman here and this is a fun one. Uh, this is one where I'll just give you a hint right off the bat. I did not put any starch at all. I just felt like these beautiful soft curves with this beautiful kind of brush stroke arm just look better than anything that I could come up with with starch. So this arm is 100% puppet tooled but contains no starch and we certainly get some counter movement in the arm but look at how great that looks. <laughs> Sometimes starch isn't the answer and this was one of those cases where I tried some different starching techniques and nothing just looked as good or as charming as just leaving it without starch at all. Now in this rig here Again, you're rigging a 100% puppet tool all the way down to the fingers. We're also going to have you rig up the fingers with puppet tools. And just like we did with the close-up hand, create an open and closed slider. And her nice long fingers make this much more convincing than what we had with the large orange man and his short stubby fingers. I never really could get that to feel like opening and closing. But here, even again without a thumb, we have a very nice sense of opening and closing that hand. So just a quick reminder of what you're going to need to do here. Once again, you're going to use puppet tools for each of the fingers. I went ahead and rigged little IK systems, two layer IK with no goal for each finger and then once again animated those and you can see the motion paths there in order to create the opening and closing animation. You could also do this simply with FK and rotation values on the nulls if you don't want to add the IK. That is optional. This again though, regardless of which technique you use, once you've completed your animation at 0, 10, and 20, then you're going to select all of those keyframes and you're going to create a morpher. Oh and don't forget to name your morpher and include the left or right designation in that name so you don't have two morphers with the same names. And then again you're going to tie that morpher to 
the slider with our little magic code that we talked about before. Now remember that the trick to doing this with a puppet tool rig is that we also have to create a dummy shape that encompasses the entire movement of the animation. That way, when you actually set your puppet mesh, the puppet mesh wraps around that whole area and allows your hand to be posable inside the mesh. Now also note that you're going to have to begin by pre-composing all of the arm, hand, and finger pieces together and positioning them here. So you're going to have to start by duplicating the arm, making a guide so you can line that up. But it's nothing that we haven't covered in the lessons. Okay, next we're going to have you rig up this hipster man's arm exactly the same way we did it in the lesson. So this is a simple jointed rig with a replacement hand. So you're going to need the slider where we can choose the different hands and a simple jointed IK rig for the arm. Again, you're going to be rigging the entire arm. We've got all the artwork for you here. As a bonus, if you would like to get a little crazy, you could rig this arm up using blended joints, but that's up to you. You can also just rig this up as a simple jointed rig the way I have it here. And your last task is the orange man. And once again, we're going to have you recreate the rig that we created in the lesson. We've got our regular click and drag controller, and we have our hand selector, and we also have our little bit of finger bending ability. Although, as we keep saying, don't expect a whole lot from this. His fingers were just a little too stubby to really make this super valuable on this character. But I really want you to go through the process of rigging this up because in many cases this is a wonderful addition to a replacement rig. And it should be noted that you can take a jointed rig like this and simply puppet tool just the hand so you can get that little finger waggle and then you're just going to be parenting the nulls into your IK chain rather than the artwork or the pre-comp containing all of your hands. And this is again that idea of mixing and matching these techniques. Each situation is going to call for something different and it's good to be aware of all the possibilities. Okay, on this rig you're also going to be starching. You'll notice that he's pretty well starched to get fairly crisp joints at the elbow and wrist. That was the only way with a fully puppet tooled rig to get any kind of decent motion on this really thick arm. On the lady, on the orange woman, uh, it worked beautifully with no starch, but with him it works a little better having that starch in place. And have a look at the starching on the original arm as you starch the arm that you're working on. If you're able to actually improve on my starching on the fingers and get a little wider range of motion, that's awesome. Again, remember that just like with the orange woman, you're going to want to make sure and draw a dummy shape around the hand to encompass all of the different hand shapes so they can all live within that same puppet mesh. Okay, so a lot of different hands to rig and some arms too. Again, it's good practice to kind of work on rigging those all together since that's what you'll be doing most of the time. Use the opposite arm as a guide while you're rigging your arm. And then check the solution file to see exactly how I rigged those same hands. Even if your rig is working, double check everything in detail against the solution file. Sometimes bad habits don't necessarily show up in every rig, but can cause problems in certain rigging situations. So you want to try to work safe and smart and avoid those potential problems with good habits right from the beginning, including good naming conventions, cleaning things up, staying organized, and so on. Our next lesson is going to focus on legs and feet. Good luck rigging your hands and arms.